Okay, we got a lot of information to cover here, so buckle up, baby. Okay, let's see what we got. Guy wants to know. He's over on Facebook, and he's got a he's got an 1804 dollar. Wants to know if it's genuine. I got a picture of this thing here somewhere. Let me see if I can pull this up. This is gonna be hard because I got a lot of stuff to show. Uh, let's see, screen. Is that right? That might be the screen. Here it is. He's got this here, 1804 dollar. And uh, wants to know if it's real. Apparently, the seller is convinced that this is genuine. Okay, we got a shot of the back here somewhere. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. There's a shot of the back. So it's got some wear. Well, it certainly looks silver. It looks like it's been cleaned. Uh, okay, there's a genuine model. Uh huh. Okay, how do you tell if your 1804 dollar is genuine? Well, the first thing you're going to look for is a pedigree. Because there are 15 known examples. 15. That's one and five more. No, 10 and five more. Another thing to look for, uh, you know, try the uh, try the four. There's no crosslet on the genuine article. Okay. Here's, no, here it is. No, there. See, the four has no, no crosslet, no little slash on the side over there. Okay. Next thing on these 1804s. There are about 20 produced. They're all proof, right? These were not made for circulation. They were made special. They were made long after 1804. Uh, but uh, the whereabouts of 15 of them are is well known, well documented. Because these are, uh, it's not the king of coins. It's a coin made for kings is what it was. They were produced starting around 1836. And good Lord, I had to do some study and catch up on all this stuff. Uh, on request of the State Department, they wanted to give them away uh, for you know some gifts like to the Sultan of Oman and uh, uh, and Muscat, for example. And uh, geez, they're wonderful pieces; they really are. But there's a lot to it. And uh, real, really, if you're if you have an 1804 dollar and it looks like something like this, uh, guaranteed fake, 100 percent fake. If you didn't get it at a major auction house and pay at least hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for the darn thing with certification knowing where it's been for the past 200 years uh, then you have a fake guaranteed right if you're not if you're paying 14.95 it's a fake that uh, we keep getting these questions people say hey is this a real 1804 no baby it ain't this one is this is a gorgeous piece this is probably the finest specimen known yeah ain't that handsome now they weren't made in 1804 so they were designed by Scott Robert Scott and then engraved by uh, probably Kneefs let's see if we get a picture of him I got a shot of him here somewhere here he is William Kneefs Kneefs or Kneefs I can't pronounce it um, Kneas Kneas I'm gonna guess it's a silent K there it is but after uh, Robert Scott died in office, they were looking for a second chief engraver. Uh, Gobrecht was uh, favored, and he almost landed the position. Uh, he's a, he was talented, but he was uh, uh, he got the job after William Neves. This is him. He's a guy who engraved the uh, oh the uh, the half dime and a couple of these uh, five dollar golds, two and a half dollar gold. Great designs. I mean, they're beautiful. No question about that. But uh, for these 1804s, you figure he's the one that did the engraving on that piece. So you're going to find some uh, neat marks. You're going to find some little tooling marks on some of these where they were straightened out. Let's see if we can zoom in and see some of this. Uh, this button. There we go. And that's going to be hard to see, let me tell you. But you're going to have the occasional straight mark. Uh, it looks like some machine doubling is what it's going to look like on uh, some devices. All right. Wonderful pieces, but the neat, neat thing is they're not actually money, right? There's no legislation that backed up this coin. They were produced by the mint, but uh, they're not. Uh, they're, it's not an act of Congress that uh, resulted in their creation. So uh, whether or not it's not a dollar, there's no face value on these. Now the bust uh, coins, once you get above quarter, they don't have denomination down here on the bottom. Uh, on quarter and half and dollar so you go by the size of the darn coin but uh, even if it did say dollar which it does it do says it on the edge uh, it's not really given face value because it's not backed up by the uh, 
uh, by the United States government. Let me find my way back home here. Catch up on chat for just a moment. Here we go. You can look at my head for a minute. I want to see who's in here. Hi, we got Wild Bill, Noah Mann, Linda Wallace, Dave Carlisle, Weasel. I slept through the big show. Me too. All right, we'll just we'll just have it again next week is all. Hopefully I'll have more stuff too. Yeah. I wonder how many cups of coffee. I don't measure by cups. This is my second pot. Mm. A cup? Nobody can handle coffee in such small quantities. Come on. Okay. Uh, where do you get the information for the 1804 dollar? Mm, well, you can type in Google. That's a great place to start. Um, I'm reading up in uh, in Breen's because this is, dude, this is love. This is coin porn at its finest. Uh, I could read some sections of this, but it goes on for a couple of pages here. Okay, let's go to a PC, over to PCGS. Okay, well, here's the screen. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, here's a great place to look is PCGS. And I pull it up, and there's actually three classes of these things. There's class one, class two, and class three. Class one with the first style produced. I believe this to be it. I've got so many pictures open, I can't tell you. And they produced, uh, what? Uh, not many, really. I think it was like three or something. Okay, on November 11, 1834, the State Department ordered two cased sets of specimens of each kind of domestic coin now in use, whether it gold whether of gold, silver, or copper, for diplomatic presentation to the King of Siam and the Sultan, or Imam, of Muscat. And that's according to John Forsyth in a letter to the Mint Director, Samuel Moore. And uh, that was reprinted in Breen in 1977. Uh, just look at page 57 for the letter. Well, here they are. And they're beautiful coins. They really are. It's a full size. Uh, and 1835 to 36 is about when they were produced. And they're proof. They're in exquisite condition for the most part. A couple of them, uh, yeah, they've seen some wear, right? Uh, they've been handled, of course. You get a lot of cabinet wear is what it's called. Uh, it's sitting in a collection. Whoa, where'd it go? There it is. It sits in a case or a cabinet, and you get some wear as it's uh, picked up and moved around on occasion. Okay, so it, it takes it down just a bit but uh yeah look at this one that's got lots of wear and stuff on there okay got a couple of contact marks they're not perfect but they sell for huge huge money and why do they do that because we know where they are we know where they've been uh the record for the class three which you know it's dependent on the eagle the design on the eagle um where are you here 2.3 million um, 11 years ago at over at Heritage Auction. And you can actually take a look at uh, each one of these, right? See the condition, uh, what grade it's in, and where the heck this thing has been. Huh. Where's that one I'd like to see? Okay, I think it's over here. Let's kill it. Uh, I can't kill that one. All right. Yeah, I've been looking at stuff for like four hours trying to get this all square. Okay, Hazeltine. I think this is the same page. Well, there's a small article you can read about on PCGS site, but here they are. Class 1, you have a lettered edge. And I had that. It said, what did it say? I wonder where it went. I can't find it. It's in the book. I've read it six times going over it. Uh, let's see. Where's the lettered edge? Well, I'm going to have to go back and find out what it says. But it says like, uh, you know, 100 cents or a dollar or unit. Yeah. Well, it's a peach. Okay, you got one. You got eight of them in a class one, which has a lettered edge. One is held by the U.S. Mint. Okay, I believe that's at the Smithsonian. One is the Stickney Eliasberg specimen. It's PCGS Proof 65. There's one, the Cohen A&A specimen. There's a Mickley Reed Hodd specimen, the Parm Lee Brian Reed specimen, proof 64, uh, certified by ICG. The Dexter specimen, that one's kind of neat. This guy uh, stamped a D. Let's see if we can find it. He stamped a D in the cloud below the O. So that's what you're looking for there is a little tiny D. 
That's the Dexter specimen. Okay, the Waters Child specimen sold in 1999 for a record $4.14 million. And that's a PCGS certified in Proof 68. And that, I believe, is this one. No, oh, it's, it's a just plain beautiful piece, right? Okay, then you got class two, and this is neat. It's a, got a new reverse, has a plain edge, and this one was struck over an 1857 Swiss shooting tailor, taller. And I got a picture of one of those. Let's see. Nope, 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 nope. I had it. I wonder where that went. Okay, we lost the we've lost the tailor. Here it is. This is an 1857 shooting uh, tailor, five francs. There were what uh, 5,191 pieces were produced. You got this Daniel Boone looking Swiss Family Robinson guy on the on the obverse, and the reverse has well the guns, the Swiss cross, lots of rays. Great detail on this. Da, da, da. Now the size was a little bit smaller than the uh, the silver, uh, kind of like a dollar, than the the 1804 dollar. But uh, well, they struck through it and it grew just a little bit, so it ended up being 40 millimeters, which is the right size for for the dollars of the day. Okay, so there it is. So really, it's a uh, the one coin would have uh, uh, face value because it's a Swiss coin that was struck over. So it'd be kind of like a Oh, one of those car coins. Okay, let's keep on going. Where were we? We had a list here. Okay, that is held by the U.S. Mint. So that one has face value, but it's in Swiss francs. Okay, then you have the new reverse with a lettered edge. Okay, you get the Berg Garrett specimen. You've heard these names. Uh, Adams Carter specimen, Davis Wolfson. The Linderman DuPont specimen. This was actually stolen back in, what, 1968 or 69 when the uh, DuPont coins were stolen. There's a Rosenthal, Rosenthal A&S specimen and the Idler BB specimen, which is now on display, two of these, at the American uh, Numismatic Association headquarters. Yeah, we know where these things are, where they've been, how they have traded over the years, Okay. Oh, let's say, uh, let's take number four. It's a proof 55 specimen, right? Which would be this guy right here, this coin. Okay, let's look at that now. Where has that been? Okay, it was purchased by Captain John Hazeltine and Koch and Company uh, in Vienna. Then uh, went to the O.H. Berg Collection and the John, uh, purchased from John Hazeltine in 1883 for the whopping price of $740. Went to T. Harrison Garrett by way of George Cogan, then uh, to John Work Garrett at uh, Johns Hopkins University then through a Bowers and Ruddy sale in 1980 for the humongous, unheard of price of $400,000. Seriously? Yeah. And it's made a couple of other uh, Sales after that, Bowers and Marina. Bowers has seen that one a couple of times. Uh, we know where these things have gone. We know where they've been. You can take one and, yeah, it's got a pedigree. That's what we're talking about, coins with a pedigree. Um, that one, there. <coughs> so the first thing you want to look for in an $1804 is a pedigree because we know where they are. So there's supposedly five out there that have been lost to the ages, lost to time. Uh, but honestly, we know what these things look like. We've got enough specimens of each uh, style to uh, to point them out. And if you got one that's all, all rubbed up and the guy's trying to sell it to you for 300 bucks, um, offer him 650 for the trouble because it's going to be bogus. Okay, but... Uh, one, two, three, you go. It, this goes on for four pages over in green. Uh, great information. If you really want to get deep into the study on these coins, yeah, these are well documented, a lot of these. Maybe you need an IV for your coffee. I think so, Bill. Okay, let's catch up on chat. Jessica's here. Good to see you. Where have you been? Yep, top of the morning. There we go. I'll just go back and, and just look at pictures. For, that's not it. Wait a minute. 
Here it is. We'll go back and look at more pictures. There's the uh, the Swiss tailor, uh, uh, another specimen that was, uh, one of these was struck over. That's a darn shame because it's a pretty rare coin to begin with. And these go for, you know, a couple of grand. This particular piece is, uh, what is it? PCGS MS63. That's for sale, matter of fact. Okay. You can have a look at all of these. Uh, there's bunches of them. You can just just drool over. Absolutely splendid pieces. Uh, but except for the one struck in a, a Swiss franc, they don't have a face value. They are marked on the edge. And I'd like to find what that says so I can tell you. Okay, we'll just start shutting these down. Let's see if we can find what it says. Here it is. 100 cents, $1 or unit. That's what the edge says. Uh, but very few of them. 40 millers, 27 grams. There it is. Designed by Robert Scott. Probably engraved by uh, William Neese. Splendid pieces. Yeah, we can take a look. Now, they didn't actually make any coins, uh, any dollar coins in 1804, besides these dollars, which were produced, you know, many, many years later. Uh, in the 1836 area, one in 1857, and the, uh, the Type 3, um, after that. Okay, now the Mint has come out with some electrotype uh, specimens. They produced four of those. I don't know the date when they produced them, but these will say copy on them. And this is one of the examples of the four. Again, no crosslet on the four. And you have the word copy over here below the tail, below the feathers. Uh, right in there. There it is. Great. All right, but there's information all over the web about these. Before uh, they made these things, of course, uh, they made them with the uh, the heraldic eagle. There you go. Great looking piece. And the early eagle design that came from the draped bust, uh, or excuse me, from the flowing hair design. This is the original silver dollar we had. And you probably don't have one of those either. Beauties, if you can get a hold of these. Now looking at the mintage of these early dollars, let's see. That's a Liberty Seated. Uh, here's a flowing hair dollars. They were produced in 1794 and 1795. Right? There's a 1794 that has a silver plug in the center. There's one of those, and you don't have it. Right? But you're looking at maybe 10,000 surviving specimens out of 178,000 produced. And they go for good coin, let me tell you. Uh, let me see if I can find a coin. No, nope. wait a minute. There we go. Um, they start in poor condition, in good condition for a thousand bucks, right? And they get right up into tens of thousands. The drape bust followed in 1795 with a small eagle. And if you can get one of those for a couple of grand, you're doing pretty good. And they top out in the seven digits, all right? Uh, by the time 1798 coming down, uh, they're not making a whole lot of them, 300,000. You have how many surviving specimens? Let's take a look on those drape bust halves, about 40,000 of uh, pieces survive of 1.2 million produced yeah and some you can get in the low uh maybe thousand or high hundreds some of these but they're going to be pretty wore out let's see uh 950 a thousand bucks if you can get them yeah they're pretty much you know a thousand fifteen hundred and in higher grades yeah uh they can cost as much as a house Good Lord. That's a piece of history for you. And it was uh, many years before another coin was produced, uh, the Gobrecht in 1836. Where the hell's the Gobrecht dollars? They started making those in 1836. Yeah, they made those for three years, but not too many. You know, 1636, you had uh, 138, uh, 339. Not too many, so it was the uh, the seeded dollar that came out afterwards. Oh, and the trade dollars, of course, are out there. Uh, but 1840, they started with the uh, the Liberty seeded dollars, and you know, 60,000, 100,000, 200,000. Not too many. There wasn't a whole lot of need for the darn things. You had two and a half dollar golds, and the 50 cents were doing great. Uh, but it picked up after a while. But those seeded dollars, you might have 85,000 specimens surviving. Few and far between. Uh, trade dollars, they're often uh, forged. 
you might have 34,000 of those. It's not until you get to the Morgans that there's enough of the darn things that, that, that a lot of people can collect them. Uh, anything before those Morgans, uh, they're few and far between. They're going to cost hundreds for screwed up pieces. But you get into those Morgan dollars and you got some uh, some good survivors. You know, a lot of dates have a million or more. Let's see, 21, you probably have 4 million out of the 44 that were struck that still survive. Probably 10% surviving on those. Yep. Okay, let me shut down a hundred of these windows because I got so much stuff open. There, we'll leave Knees up here. There we go. So that's what I've got. Um, but if somebody comes up to you and says, hey man, is my coin genuine? And it looks like, where to go? And it looks like this? Uh, no, it's not. Matter of fact, these aren't worth a dollar really well they're, they're worth millions of dollars but they have no no face value because legislation does not support them well there we go I just thought I'd give you a quick uh, a quick tour on those okay let's get back to the chat and we'll finish this up and get out of here would would there it is there uh, I recommend picking up a copy of Breams there's so much good, there's so much love in here. Good Lord. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've lost my, there you go. Walter Breen's Complete Encyclopedia of U.S. and Colonial Coins. If you want a good read, and really, if you can sit down and read the whole thing from front to back, you're, you're a better man than I am. Uh, I get to it a little piece at a time. It's the best I can do. Have to work, says Jessica. Good luck. That's right. Go earn that, uh, earn that money and keep us all in the uh, manner to which we've become accustomed. There we go. I'll leave you with that, guys. Yeah, there are some beautiful pieces of history out there. And this is uh, these 1804 dollars are one of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take off. You guys stay groovy, okay?